What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. I had to remember what I was playing there for a second. Had to remember what I was playing. I was like, I'm looking at the screen right now. My brain is indexing. It's moving things around and it's a blank. Damn it. Well, I think we hit everything at this location. I'm pretty sure we're done. Even with the trash cans and whatnot, I think I hit them all. Now, during the course of our last scavenging expedition, we got some good stuff. We got some weights so that we can make some awesome upgrades and get ourselves all nice and in shape. Maybe become stronger, get some better statistics. But for now, it's time to go back home. It's the end of the day. We are kind of full up, I guess. I mean, not really, but sort of. I guess we could maybe... We're at the alley right now. What's close enough to hit? I think the general store is probably the only real option right now. I think we can take a look over here and maybe we have more than enough time to get back home before 3 a.m. I think you get a big morale penalty as I recall if that happens. But we should be able to make it back without any problems I think. Plus we're not full up on loot yet so I figure we might as well have a look around and see if maybe we can half clear this place before tomorrow. He's full up. Wait is he full up? He is not full up. Okay, so we got Weekter. Let's go ahead and have Weekter take a look around. I don't know who it's... It looks like we've got a couple of looter sentries, and one of them looks like they have, like, a... What kind of firearm does that guy have? Either way, one of them has a gun that looks kind of threatening. And so since I'm feeling kind of threatened right now, let's unleash the Brucka. Ooh, how does that feel? You have no armor on. Oh my god, you've been shot in the face. Okay, so I'm going to put her right there. We'll get her going with the knife. And unfortunately, she is going to miss. However, <laughs> I need a bandage. That's an understatement, my friend. That is a classic understatement right there. You need more than a bandage. You need something. Put him into position right here. Get him swanging, unfortunately. He had that thing swanging, but he couldn't get him. There we go. First guy's down. We're going to finish him off just to make sure that no zombies get up in the way. Yeah, that guy's got like an Uzi or some shit. Ow! Is that a MAC-10 or an Uzi? What is that? It looks like an Uzi. It's a little bit big for a MAC-10. The front end of it looks a little bit too large. Yeah, I'm not okay with this. I say we moved right here. And we let him have it. I mean, obviously, we're probably going to get some zombies that come in here. Yeah, he's called an SMG looter. So I assume that that doesn't stand for, like, smiles many guys. I don't know. Smiles many. We've got to come up with a G word right there. We've got... The Smiles Mini Gang, I don't think that works either. I think that still makes them sound a little bit unthreatening. Oh, well. There we go. No, don't shoot people who have no armor. Well, he kind of had armor. I think I'm probably going to lay back on using my firearms any further and just see if maybe we can lay this guy out the old-fashioned way with blunt weaponry and a will. There it is. Hope he made a will because we now have the will to kill him. And when I've got the will to kill, you know it fits the bill when we give you the drill upside your temple. Mm. It got violent at the end right there. All right, so we've got... Ooh, is that a... Does it fire 9mm? Oh, it does. Ooh. Splatter cat's excited. Can you carry this? Please tell me somebody can carry this. This is all that I care about. If you can't loot this right now, I will fall over and die. I will be very, very upset with you. Yay, we've got an Uzi. An Uzi. Uzi. It sounds so much happier when you say Uzi. And <laughs> then so we found ourselves an Uzi. All excited about it. Yay. That guy's got a bunch of shotgun shells, which I will definitely bring back with us. We should probably figure out a way. Let me drop this over here. And then what we'll do is we shall open up the inventory, unload that big bang stick. And do I need more helmets right now? I mean, honestly, I think the stuff should stay here until the next time that we come back. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. We can't loot anything further. Is this for upgrades? As long as it's not for upgrades, I don't care. So let's bring back the shotguns with us because, eh, well, we don't need pistols. A couple more shotguns never... That's the worst. Nope. I was going to say, a couple more shotguns never hurt anybody. But I think that that is probably vastly untrue given the fact that a large part of human history has been spent with us shooting at each other. I'm just... Throwing it out there right now. We're probably going to get an event on the way back. It would be weird to move that far without an event. I would hope that it would be a food event. Oh, well, we made our travel time without any problems. I guess not. Goes to show. It just goes to show. That's what I get. Six more food. Luxury items, 32. We should get a whole bunch of morale today, I think. 
Still a little bit disappointed about Max, but I think I made the right call, given the information that was available to me. Oh, she's bit. Shit. Okay, so that's we haven't seen that before in this entire thing. That little symbol right there means that she's bit. Let's go listen to the radio real fast. That was Casablanca with the song Wheat Heart. Wait a second. No, that was their other song, New Hair Tonic. Sorry for the mix-up. I'm dying from the heat today. Sometimes I feel like I'm on a space station, like I'm just sitting in here waiting for the next rocket. It's not comfortable. My muscles are atrophying. The air is stale, but I can talk to you, mission control, and as much as it'd be nice to take a stroll, I know I can't go outside. Anyhow, hot makes me sleepy. Apologize if I sleep or if I fall asleep at the console and accidentally play something prog. Stay cool, stay safe, and stay in touch. All right, well, let's go have a conversation with Davis first. How can I help? Okay, it doesn't look like he's got anything. Okay, so nothing new on him. Let's have a chat. See? Anything that would improve your mood? I uh, don't know. I'll tell you what would improve my mood, not having a bit person here. I. She shakes her head. What's it like out there? Um, sorry. I don't understand. Do you speak any English? No. Well, do you have any skills I should know about, K? I I know understand. I mean, talking louder isn't going to make it any better. We'll figure it out. What can I do? Anything that would improve your mood? Well, since I doubt you'll find, me, find any... Mate, I guess? That threw me off right there. Isn't there supposed to be like a, a thing right there? That threw me off. I was like, he's trying to drink a mate? I don't think that's going to make his mate very happy if you drink her. Converting a human being into a fluid and then ingesting it seems like a great way to not be friendly. I wouldn't mind some chocolate now and again, some rechargeable batteries. If I could find a game system, I'm going to need them. Okay, so he likes to play video games. That's good. Okay, well, at least they don't have... Well, let me see here. Can I ask you something? You have any skills I should know about? Well, I've done a little of everything. Retail, management, boxing lessons, construction, sometimes all in the same day, you know, to pay for school. I was getting a degree in architectural engineering, which I guess I should use to fortify that fence out front. Alright, well, that maybe he's got better mechanic skills than other people. That would actually really help out. Have you heard anything about what's going on in other areas? Not really. We had to take the back the we had to take the back roads to San Saba because the National Guard was diverting people to a shelter. I hope my parents got to one. I don't even I didn't even know the dead were coming back to life until they bit Molina. I was kind of hoping this place was an official unofficial shelter, you know, so we could get her to a proper doctor. How did she get bit? We were over in San Saba because that's where my parents' store was. Unfortunately, the town had already been evacuated and they were gone. It was late, so we spent the night there. When we woke up, the gas in my car had been siphoned and some of the engines stripped for parts, so we were stranded there. We could have left, but the store had food, and I hope my parents might meet us there. We ended up staying about two weeks. That's when the looters arrived. There was a car full of them, and they were trying to break into the store. Only thing I could do was get the pistol from the safe and scare them off, but it didn't work. After exchanging shots, they got desperate and drove through the front of the store. They just started grabbing food. That's when I saw one of those corpses for the first time. It just came up behind the looter and ripped off his ear. I grabbed Melina, ran out the back, and that's when the dead girl ambushed her and bit her. Without that drugstore nearby, man, I don't even know. I have a question about Melina. Does she have any skills we should know about? Melina comes from a long line of watchmakers, so she's really amazing with mechanical gadgets and metalwork, and she loves working on projects. We both kind of hate being idle. Oh, good. It looks like we've got two people with some mechanical expertise, which is a big, big hole in our entire group, so hopefully they've actually got some sizable skills, maybe better than what our trucker friend has. Can she speak any English? She's been trying to. I grew up in the U.S., but she only came here a few years ago, and she's never really had time to study the language. If you need me to translate or pass on a message to her, just let me know. How long have you two been together? We got married last year. Best thing that's ever happened to me. Jeez, I'm a lucky man. You won't meet a sweeter person in your life. I don't like to think what life was like before we met. It's been hard because money's been tight, but she never cared about the crummy apartment or the long hours at work or anything. I'd do anything for her. Well, there you go. As long as you match up. That's like one of those funny things in life when you find, like, that person. You know what I mean? Like, eh, once you get there, it's it's weird. I, I can agree that it's hard to think about times before that person was around. You just be like, eh, not feeling so good about this right now. I kind of want, I, I kind of don't want you to go anywhere. That'd be kind of strange. It might ruin my day if you did. Especially if you're not, like, a sentimental or sappy person like I am. Like, I'm just kind of like, meh, about everything. At the same time, I can't get sentimental about some things, namely my significant other. <laughs> Let's keep the shield. Let's go over there. We're going to throw... I'm going to keep both those. Everything else, though, those 5.56s five, five, might be useful later on, too. 
I'm pretty excited about finding some NATO rifle that can fire those, although I always say that, but doesn't... I don't know. Never mind. I'm not even going to enter into that conversation. There are far too many things I do not know and do not understand. I should probably take this opportunity to equip everybody as well. Throw that in there. And then she's just carrying too much weight right now, unfortunately. That's why she's so useless to me. I might try and find somebody that's got medical skills that can actually carry more stuff. I'd be willing to bet they probably put a combat medic into the game somewhere that you could pick up at some point. It would be odd if they didn't. Let's give Renee a weapon real fast. I'm sorry, some armor. There we go. We can give Renee, since she is a medic, we'll give her the boots. We will give her some shoes. Oh, never mind. She already got the boots. Huh. Boots are shoes. All right, so she's got a shield. I'm going to give her a... Yeah, since she's a group medic, let's go ahead and give her that. Do we have any arm things she can use? No, we have zero arm things that she can use. That's fine, though. Not a huge deal. I can also bring back in one of those riding leathers to make sure that she's got that. Looking a little bit better now. I'm not going to totally equip everybody. I'm just trying to make sure that if anything goes wrong, people at least have some equipment. Joel can have that right there. That's looking pretty good. No arm accessories, nothing else looking. Actually, we got bike helmets. He can have that with Anita Cass. She's got that armor right there, although I think she might do better. Oh, we don't have any more riding leathers. Well, never mind. She can't have them then. She can't have them. In her head slot, though, we have tons of stuff for that now, so maybe we'll throw that in there. Davis Cray, probably enough to keep him armored up, although I don't think he'll actually go into combat at any point. It seems odd if our guy in a wheelchair, I just wouldn't put him in combat. He might be able to chop perfectly fine, but I'd rather not risk it, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, he's good at what he does, I'd rather keep him in that role. With Doug, Big Dougie Fresh, we'll give him a leather jacket, I guess. Give him a mask. Give him some shoes. Just trying to make sure that everybody's like equipped with things that might be useful later on. He's got weapons. I think I'll probably give him... Combat knife seems okay. Maybe a hammer. I mean, I think he had... Pretty sure he had the right stuff, I think. We'll drop that in there. That's going to give us a whole bunch of 9mm. It might be worthwhile to drop off with... We have a shotgun. Eh. I don't know if I want to swap out the shotgun or not. I'm going to throw that stuff in there. We'll keep that where it's at. Bud Larson's looking good. Let's get him unloaded real fast. There we go. He's kind of weighed down, though. Even without the Molotov, we're wearing a lot of gear at the moment. It kind of makes me wonder if we should just like clear out locations and then come back, essentially, in the bug nude so that we can loot a little bit better. I may have been doing this wrong. There's like a pirate gun right there. Got a screwdriver on Oscar. He's got a can of biscotti and some bandages. Throw those into the stockpile. Let's give Oscar... I don't know what his skills are looking like just yet, but I'm sure his skills are probably reasonably decent. It sounds like they are anyways, so maybe throw a... Give him a crowbar, possibly. Cost 5 AP. Does it do a lot of damage, maybe? I think they expanded the little stats area of each weapon down at the bottom right. It seems like it's got a lot more to it now. I don't know. It seems like it's got a lot more to it. I will go with a... I like the hammer a lot. The hammer is really, really good. I prefer it. we got Melina. She's got some codeine. Okay. Well, I'll probably not equip everybody else right now. That's kind of a waste of episode space, and I'd rather not do it. I want to play the game. I'm excited about playing. I'm always excited about playing video games. That's kind of why I do this on YouTube. Hmm... Let's have a look at our work schedule and see what we can get away with here. I'd love to see what her stats are looking like. So Oscar Guzman, he's got good mechanical skill. He's got good melee skill. He's okay at science. Actually, not as good as he led on. How about Melina? Ah, seven mechanical. So there's Melina's expertise right there. So we'll probably use Melina to start upgrading things as far as I know. Let's go ahead and crash out for the night. We are going to start eating through our antibiotics, unfortunately, so... There's that to be thought about. We didn't find any of the things that she wants. She wanted sleeping pills and she wanted deodorant. I haven't found any deodorant like in the entire game as of right now. Strangely enough, hopefully she doesn't stay in a bad mood. Next day! Ooh, morale's up by 119. We had a good day. We had a very, very good day. I'm excited about that. We ate some food. We have 571. We're going down by increments of 33, so 100 every three days. We have about two weeks of food. A little over two weeks of food. Yeah. Well, maybe not even two weeks. I'm bad at math. We're close, though. I mean, I was assuming that 33 food per day, so every three days we go through 100 food, so that gives us 15 days and a half. I mean, I may have done my math improperly, but I'm not going to focus on it for too long right now. Days without antibiotics. We used antibiotics right there. 
We used fuel, though. We have 46 fuel, though, so maybe... You call yourself a leader? Ha! It's like you want this place to be overrun. Could you maybe give me some idea on how I failed you? Why? I just love doing people's work for them. Okay, here I go. Try to follow along. We are sitting ducks in here. A gang of crazed druggy looters could sneak up and rip open our gate with a PCP meth strength. I mean, haven't you ever played a post-apocalyptic role-playing game before? So, what do we do? Oh, jeez. We need to build a watchtower. Like yesterday. We can see them coming a mile away and shoot a few to scare the rest of them off. If anything gets to the gate, we just walk down and poke them with our spears. Right in their crazy meth eyes. Not a half bad idea. No, it's an all good idea. Here's a drawing I made of it on a napkin. Please don't wipe your hands on it by accident. I figure we have 15 days at the most before our enemies figure out we're here. Are you going to help or am I going to have to sell us to everyone myself? Well, might be 17. You know how stubborn and lazy difficult people can be. Ugh, yes. Leave it to people to screw it all up. Oh, what's that? There's more than a frame? Yes, it's called a big fixture and I see it all the time. Which means it'll probably take 17 days, but not one more. Doug walks off. Hey, Vic, I'm pretty broken up about Sheriff Reinhardt's death, and I can't stop thinking about him. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna lie, Joel. Putting him down before he turned was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I mean, I try my best, but I'm just not even close to being the officer that he was, and just thinking about it, well, I haven't been feeling myself lately. You think maybe I could take a day or two to get my head straight? I'd say we can't spare the manpower, but I know you wouldn't have asked me if it wasn't serious. So you know what? Go ahead and take two days to get your head straight. Let's go with negotiation leader skill. If we've got the test, we can do that. Something you need? Vic, I would appreciate it if you could run those kinds of decisions by me in the future. Hmm. Well, I guess I could have checked with you first. I was concerned about Joel, that's all. I appreciate you telling me in private. The last thing we need is for people to think the leadership here is all over each other's throats. Thanks for understanding. I'll see you, Vic. Excuse me, I just wanted to thank you again for your help. I owe you her life, my life, and I want you to know that I intend to do anything I can to help out there. Well, you're welcome. It was lucky we found her when we did. She's doing better now. I mean, it's still dangerous out there and those creatures are still around, but it's a relief knowing she's going to make it. And my work will f and I'll work my fingers to the bone to keep this place safe. If there's anything I know how to do, it's work. Great, we got a long day ahead of us. Head to the cafeteria for your assignment. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that it seems like a lot of people are upset at the moment. I know it's been difficult around here lately, but it's like they've never had a stressful day in their life. Well, if you could help assure people I'm handling the situation, I'd appreciate it. Sure thing. I'll do my best to get people to look on the bright side. It's the least I can do. Thanks, Oscar. As long as I have Melina, I've got nothing to be upset about. Alright, well if that works, I owe you a beer or at least a cup of that bucket of fermenting fruit. Ugh. Yeah, that's okay. I'll see ya. Apparently we're making Pruno right now. Everybody should be a lot happier because morale is going upwards. We have a lot less negative morale than we normally do. I don't know. Let's take a look at the stockpile real fast. I, or I'm sorry, at the goals. I figure. So is their mood separate from their morale though? They're all content. I only have. There's only one person who's disgruntled right now. That's really the only part that I'm worried about at the moment. I mean, I guess I could take a look. Do we have any? Oh my god, we have so many skills to allocate. So, oh, we got more stats too. Cool. All right. Well, if we're gonna. Hmm. I figure if our character is gonna be a melee berserker, we might as well continue like mashing into strength. We need somebody that can loot with all the gear on too, so I'm gonna put more into strength, and hopefully he'll keep on hitting hard. That being born in mind, or born in mind, I guess. I don't know. Is it being? I don't. I'm not really sure. That being carried in mind. There we go. I'm gonna switch the word around because I don't want to mix this up with a baby situation. We should probably go for negotiation. The player's force of personality is so attractive that it earns 10 morale per day. The player's personality motivates people to save a bit more food, reducing food cost by 25%. Well, I feel like morale is okay right now, so I'll probably go with rationing. I mean, let me see what else we can get to on the list. So if I go for survivalism, what's next? Expert gardener, so we get more food per day, and we get more foot speed. Okay. Well... It's a tough call. I'll probably go for that, and we'll go for Expert Gardener, because the Trailblazer is not going to matter anymore once we get a car, once we get a horse. So the Expert Gardener seems like the better long-term plan. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, it just kind of feels that way to me. And then we'll work on negotiation after that to try and get that up to a region where it's a bit more useful. I do think it might be a decent plan to put a couple in range, just in case I need to use it later on. But for now, we'll sit on the points. For our goals, 
our goals are pretty much the same that they've ever been. I need to unlock more data items. It's just that the wording is so long on some of those that I'm not really sure how to handle it. Like you basically get big giant books out of some of them. Which I appreciate the developers taking the time to add that much lore to the world. It's time consuming to think up that sort of stuff. But at the same time, reading it on camera is something that really bogs down an episode. Let's see what we can do here. So we've got a couple people who are unavailable. Why are they unavailable? Doug's still on the fence repair. Alright, well how many parts do we have? We got 44 parts. So we could actually, if we were really, really smart about it... Oh, we can make a garage. We can make a gym. We can make a recre... Oh, he leveled up! Look, he added mechanical skill. That's what happened right here. I think I would like to go with... Well, I promised Vic the wood fence. But we're not on it yet, so I think it'll be okay if we wait a little while longer. I'm going to put Anita Cass on the watchtower. Renee's on the watchtower. He's unavailable for a couple days. I'm going to put Doug on the watchtower. I would love to get this done by today. Oscar Guzman's ready to go. Melina Guzman's unavailable. So Joel's unavailable. Melina's unavailable for 54 hours. Let's put Oscar on the watchtower as well. There we go. If we can get this done by tomorrow morning, I would be really, really stoked about it. So we'll finish that off. After that, we got to work on the wood fence. So during today's scavenging party, we really want to make sure that we hyper-focus on parts. We need six parts in order to make the fence. Once we can make the fence, we'll be a little bit more safe. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other upgrades around, but for the time being, we need, we need to get that fence up because I think Vic is going to be upset if we don't it said that he got a big we're gonna get a big morale boost from putting Doug on the watchtower we're gonna get a big morale boost from getting Vic up onto the new wooden reinforced wall so we'll have a wooden out wall and an inside chain wall not bad in fact I would probably go the opposite direction because wood is easier to get through chain links tough to get through if it's well built unless you got snips I mean I guess you could climb over it I would actually strongly consider what we should have somebody do if it was me anyways is we would I mean we need to get a welder and just start welding spikes onto the top or something. Basically, you want to put them at a downward angle like that so it's harder to climb in. Because right now with a chain link fence, I can hop a chain link fence with one jump. It's not hard. I mean, same with a wood fence. Worst risk is going to get some splinters. I mean, that's pretty much it. Is everybody all unloaded? I think everybody's unloaded right now, so I shouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, Vic's good to go. He needs to reload, though. Oscar, he's got that stuff. Bud, how you looking right now? Okay, Bud's looking pretty good. I think we'll be able to keep. I think we'll be able to keep this working with the people that we got right now. Our morale is looking really, really good, and I want to keep that on the uptick if at all possible. Our morale is about to recover and be in the positive for the first time ever. We've got more than enough fuel than we need. I might turn it off in the next couple days. Probably I'll try and keep about 24 gallons, essentially, about a week's worth of fuel, just in case. But if we can keep things flowing, I think we'll be all right right here. The old general store is where we went last. And I think that might be a good call. Lano Residential, I know what's there, which is why I've been holding off on it. Once we get these entire, this big lobe right here all taken care of, we'll start dealing with this big blob over here along the 281, the 87, and the 190. This little Michigan-looking region, I guess. I mean, it doesn't really look, that's a strawberry. Never mind, it's a strawberry. Let's go back to the old general store. Hopefully we don't get a whole lot of disruptive events. What did we get? Roadkill. Let's check it. Sometimes you get parts out of these. And considering the... And the negligible amount of parts that we need, just being able to grab one or two would fix the problem for us. How many corpses we got? Just two or three? Okay. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. One by one, we will hit them in the brain. Oh, and there it is. The zombie no longer knows how to do maths. It's all good. Let's go ahead and I've been watching Adventure Time in my free time. Like, that's been my series of the month. I finished Peaky Blinders, which I really, really enjoy. I don't know how many of you like the Netflix series, but honestly, Netflix has been killing it lately with some of their, like, signature series that they've been going. Orange is the New Black is really good. I enjoyed that one all the way through. Peaky Blinders is pretty good. I'm really excited about Marco Polo because when I was a kid, I was really, really obsessed with Marco Polo. Like, I was constantly, I don't know, something about his adventures, just, you know, dealing with the con and everything. It was really, really cool. I enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed reading about Marco Polo as a kid, and so I'm looking forward to watching that on Netflix too, but so far everything's been going great, but back to the original point, I've been watching Adventure Time for the first time, and I finished season one, and I love that show, I really do, I think there's a reason why this show is so popular, I mean, obviously it's a stoner show, like, there's a lot of stoner humor in that show, if you're baked, it's a lot better, but even sober, I mean, it's a good show for kids, I mean, frankly, every single episode has a pretty good message in it, if you read between the lines a little bit, and the humor is funny, a lot of it's like fart humor, and you know, Kind of like 
strong arming, but I still, I, I, I've enjoyed the entire thing. I like the little songs they break out with too because I like singing and I like do random songs around the house and stuff that I make up. You've seen it in my episodes. So I like how they have like random made up songs along the way too. It pleases me. Now that we're back out here, this is probably a pretty decent spot to break off the episode before we get dug in and get ourselves into any trouble. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Hi to everybody.